All right, so this lecture we're gonna start on the uh, knowledge of eigenspaces, eigenvalues, eigenvectors. So first, the definition. So given an operator, well then a scalar is an eigenvalue of t if we have a non-zero vector such that t x equal to alpha x. Okay, if we have this, so this is an eigenvalue if there exists a non-zero such that we have this, so that the map is really simple, okay? So x is an eigenvector for t corresponding to alpha, so we call this x, okay? And we define the point spectrum is the set of all eigenvalues, it's the point spectrum. And the eigenspace is basically the kernel of this map, okay? So if you're in the eigenspace, then you're the eigenvector corresponding to alpha. Okay, so so this is this is basically the set of set of all x x such that x is an eigen eigenvector of t corresponding to alpha. Okay. Yeah. And now if A is a matrix, we work with the left multiplication operator right so we can define similar notion so we can define what is the point spectrum of a matrix what is the eigen eigenvector of the eigen spaces kind of thing like that okay so here's a theorem the theorem states that the alpha is in is in the point spectrum if and only after the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero okay so the proof is really simple if you're the eigenvalue, then we have this, right? So this equivalence is verified. Now, if you have this, then this map, this map is not invertible, right? Right, so here we're good. And now if this is not invertible, not invertible means not injective, right? Then we have this, right? So this one, is okay and if this is not invertible then if it only if this is not invertible this one's also verified and we have this by our knowledge for determinants so they're all verified okay so here we have this so now we're gonna put a new question does we do we have this property if a b are matrices of polynomials so that each entry of the matrix is a polynomial the answer is yes because if we let e to be the equivalence classes of all the field of quotients so the field of quotient is basically we view this as fx over gx and we define addition and multiplication on e similar as we did for the rational numbers and we know that uh, they're equivalent if and only if we have this. So F1, G1 is equivalent to F2, G2. Right? If and only if, if you just multiply it out, two is equal to F2, G1. Right? So they're kind of like equal. right? So this is our equivalence relation. And the equivalence class, the set of all equivalence classes. right? Uh, we call this, right? we define addition, multiplication, as we did for rationals and this turns out to be that e is a field you can just verify it on your own and now if we consider the embedding map pi that takes the polynomial to p uh takes the polynomial to e so that it takes fx to this okay right so when a is this we can just view a as the element of this and this is a field, so obviously we have this. Okay, this is what we this is what we've been doing. So now we we define what is a characteristic polynomial of A. So given a field and A is a matrix, the characteristic polynomial is defined as this. Okay, is the is the polynomial of this. So notice that if alpha is a root. Of this polynomial if p a alpha is equal to zero right the determinant of this is equal to zero which means that alpha is the point spectrum 
right? And conversely, if you're the point spectrum, then this should be zero then, right? Which means that the eigen the eigenvalues of t are precisely the roots of this polynomial of the characteristic polynomial. So this the name characteristic is like it characterized the matrix, right? The set of all um the 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 roots the roots are the the eigenvalues, right? Now, so here's a proposition that if we have this, then the determinant of A is a polynomial. Well, this is proved by induction, so I just skipped it. You just compute it directly. And also this one. If A is this one, then the degree of the character is a polynomial is equal to N. So the proof is that because A minus Xin is this, right? So we can just apply this, right? So this is uh, again by induction. Okay. So here's the corollary. That is what we really care about. Is that for any matrix it has at most n distinct eigenvalues. Right? Eigenvalues of A are the roots of the, the characteristic polynomial. Since this is equal to zero if only if this, right? This is we we've been we I just talked about this. And PAX has n roots at most. I mean Sorry, the English doesn't make sense. It has at most n distinct, right? Distinct roots. At most n distinct roots in the field, right? Well, if the field is algebraically closed and we have like exactly n roots, but we also have to make sure that they're distinct, right? So this is like the edge case, like, n distinct eigenvalues for an n times n matrix. So here's the proposition is that similar matrices has similar eigen, I mean, similar characteristic polynomial. Well, the proof is just by direct computation. Well, if they're similar, then we have this, right? So b minus i x i n is equal to this. And this is equal to this. So we can bring this inside. Well, why? Because this thing is equal to this times r, right? r negative 1 inverse of r a minus x, right? x x is a scalar, right? x times, well, this times this gives this again. So this thing multiplied by r, this gives this minus equal to what? Minus equal to this, this gives you i, right? So they're, they're the same. Well, then we're good because the Curtis volume is the determinant of this, which is the determinant of this, right? The determinant of this gives, because as we discussed, right? This gives you this, this gives you this, this gives you this. Boom, boom equals to one, right? Times PAX, right? So PBX is equal to PAX. So, which means that, which means that we have this, uh, by change of basis, right? To change of basis, like they're similar, right? They're similar. Change of basis, like for any, for any operator T, right? for any operator T. It's matrix, right? We have this. So the definition makes sense because that for any, the characteristic polynomial of a operator, is the, the determinant of its matrix corresponding to one one ordered basis, right? Minus minus x i n. Oh, this is well defined, right? Because we said that well for any two, they're the same, right? So we just pick any one. Just pick one. They're the same. Okay. So now we give a new definition. What are the spectrum of t? The spectrum of t are uh, are all this few uh, all the field elements such that make this map not invertible okay not invertible well if it is finite then they're they're equal to each other why because well let's look at this direction if 
if alpha is in the spectrum, which means that T minus alpha IV not invertible, which means that not injective, which means that kernel is not equal to zero, which means that alpha is an eigen eigen value, right? Now, for this direction, for this direction, if you were in, if you're this, then it's not, or T minus alpha IV is not injective, which is not surjective, because we're in finite, I mean, not bijective or not invertible, right? Not injective, not bijective, not invertible, right? It's the same thing. So they're the same when it's finite dimensional. But for infinite dimensional, the story gets different. Why? So take a look. Now, let V be the vector space of continuous function from 0 1 to R. And we define an operator that takes fx to x times fx. So it's easy to verify it's a linear map, but this is what we, it's true, but we don't really like, or I just skipped the verification. So, but we, we want to show is that we have these two things. This, the number is zero, the real number is zero. It's, the, it's not a point spectrum, but it is a spectrum. Why? Okay, so first, if f is in the kernel, right, which is the kernel of this. So if f is in the kernel of this map, right, if you're in the point spectrum, I mean, no, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. If you are, if you're the eigenvector corresponding to zero, right, then this should be zero, right, because you're the kernel mx. This should be zero, which means that fx should be zero on zero to one. But if it's continuous, so x zero is zero. So f is equal to zero, which means that kernel of mx is equal to zero, right? So we have this equality. Which means that zero is, this is the zero mapping, and this is the zero number, right? The real number is zero. It is not a point spectrum because it has no eigenvectors, right? We require eigenvectors to be non-zero, but the only we have is zero. So you're not in the point spectrum, but you're in the spectrum because this is not invertible because the range of mx is not equal to v. Because if you're in the range, then g0 should be 0, right? But we have so many functions that if you just consider 0, 1, and this function, right? It's not surjective, so it's not invertible, okay? So some notes is that if alpha is in the point spectrum, alpha is a root of ptx, right? Alpha is a point spectrum, then alpha is a root of the characteristic polynomial, so x minus alpha divides the polynomial. So we have those settings. We defined the geometric multiplicity of alpha to be the dimension of the kernel of this, the dimension of the 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 eigenspace, right? Uh, dimension of the eigenspace, the dimension. The vector space dimension right? now for the algebraic multiplicity it's the maximum power that it divides the polynomial right because it divides it if it's a root if, it, if it's a spectrum right if it's in the spectrum right? then we have this algebraic multiplicity right which is like the polynomial knowledge and this is our vector space dimension so here's an example just a simple one so if a is the this matrix then it's character is a polynomial, right? If you just calculate it, if you just calculate the product, right? Minus x, minus x, minus x, minus x, minus x, right? Because it's upper triangular, so the determinant are the product on the diagonal entries. So the PAX is equal to this, okay? So the point spectrums are negative four and seven. The algebraic multiplicity on negative four is three, for seven it is two, but the geometric multiplicity, right? 
as you would one and so does this one this one well if you just take a look this is one right because if x is in the kernel of this right then all its span is also in the kernel right yeah all right this one you can just argue it easily <laughs> Now, from here, right, those are like bigger than the geometric one, and this turns out to be a proposition. So the proof is not hard. We could we just pick a kernel for the eigenspace. Sorry, sister. Could, so we define this as the eigenspace. Well, we a little bit of dimension, right? The dimension is basically our geometric multiplicity. We pick a basis and we extend it to V, so we consider this uh, matrix, it will be look like this, right? If you just think about it. So those are arbitrary, like random matrices, we don't care. The thing we care is that it's characteristic polynomial, right? If you, just, if you just evaluate, it should be equal to this times the polynomial, the characteristic of this matrix, right? If you just go down. Because those are all zeros, right? You can just think about it, and from here, we see that this, this thing, this thing, just just a negative sign playing around. We don't care, okay? This thing divides PDX. Right? It divides PTX. So, this, the algebraic multiplicity, if this divides this, then the maximum should be at least this, right? So it's really good to this, which is this. So we're done. And here's the last theorem is that different vectors corresponding to distinct eigenvalues are independent, okay? So this one's also easy. If we have this, then we apply T minus alpha IV, right? So this is a zero vector. This is a zero vector. This is linear. Linear map takes zero vector to zero vector, right? So this, we expand, we have this thing, and this goes to zero. So we have this left. And y is not zero, so this should be zero. This is not zero, so this should be zero. If this is zero, this should be zero. X is not zero, so this should be zero. So we have these two. Okay, so we're done. Okay, so this concludes uh, this lecture, and we'll continue for later.